Okay, so we're gonna kind of look at um, the sniper and we're gonna look at some things from the sniper, um, what we first see um, uh, in the story. The the beginning of the story, we're gonna see kind of uh, two different things that, at, at play here. Um, sometimes you see the words called dichotomy, which means two different things that are um, in the same world that are possibly against each other. Um, <clears throat> we're gonna see some dichotomies. We're gonna see some different things here. <clears throat> excuse me, that's going to be present in the city. First, we're going to see the roof uh, versus the city. We're going to see those two viewpoints, someone from the rooftop and someone in the city. We're going to see what's called a free stater and a, a Republican and not the Republican that you see here in the United States. This is in Ireland. And then we're going to see students versus the fanatics. Um, these two things, they exist side by side, um, but they're intense opposition of each other. Like there's two things that can kind of coexist, but they're 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 tensely against each other. Um, war has really distorted the landscape of of the city, um, and it's turned this city into a battlefield, um, and it's not a good thing at all. A couple of themes that we start out with that we'll see uh, the first active theme that we're going to really look at is the division. How are there divisions? I want you guys to kind of as you read or as you go back and reread, what are the divisions that you see? And then the second uh, set of themes that we're gonna see is war and violence. We're gonna see these at play. We're gonna see these things, um, um, you know, in the story. And, and also like some hatred towards other people. Um, so as you're reading, kind of look for these themes as well. Okay, so everything in this, story matters. And in war, when you we're in, we're in the middle of a war, little things matters. Even the slightest choices that you make matter. Um, like choosing to light a cigarette, um, that can take on a significance of life or death. Um, you know, the sniper kind of gets lucky and, and takes a risk and he's lucky not, he didn't get killed. Um, I mean, the other sniper, you could say maybe he's not good enough, uh, because of, uh, or not skilled enough to, to capitalize on, on his mistakes. Um, we're still looking at themes in this point of war and violence. We're also looking at themes of chance. Like this is kind of a crazy thing. This, by chance, if someone lights a cigarette, they could die. Um, we're also looking at humanity. How do people feel about things? And we're looking at remorse. Um, do you feel sorry? Do you feel sorry for a situation? Do you feel sorry for yourself? So those are some themes that start to creep in as we start getting through the story. As we start looking at the other things that's depicted in the story, you, we're going to look at some analogies that may pop up. And, and the one is the armored car. The armored car is depicted as kind of like an unnatural beast that you wouldn't see in a city. I mean, if you go down to San Antonio, you're not going to see an armored car ride around in the street. Um, it's highlighting how distorted this world is and how different this world is. The the sniper is put in a situation where he's got to be he's got to be the killer or the one being killed. Um, he can't think, you know. Um, <clears throat> he might he might have to kill individuals that he doesn't want to kill. Uh, a war kind of really blurs the line between soldiers and people that are that are kind of non-combatants uh, between people that are innocent and people that comply with orders. And we're still looking at some different themes here. We're still looking at division. We're still looking at the war and violence. We're still looking at chance and we're still looking at humanity and remorse. This stuff is really coming into play even more as we get to this part of the story. As we start getting further, a little bit further, we look at events that lead to the other and though the sniper saves himself from the armored car um, and the old woman, this act uh, makes him vulnerable. Uh, and really, it leads to him being shot in the arm. Um, he has a very numbed reaction to the wound, um, along with a very powerful description of it. So here's the quandary or the, I guess, the, the, the problem that the sniper is faced with. Um, he wants to deal with the pain of the wound of getting shot, but he has to also deal with somebody that's watching his every movement and trying to find him. Um, and so if he deals with the pain, 
he might get killed and then he's never going to feel anything again. So he's got to be numb to it. His arm feels like it's cut in two. Um, and it's kind of like a literal, you know, it's cut off basically from, from body and mind and from life and death. He's got to basically make it numb in his mind and deal with this. And that's, that's the hard, hard part of this is that these little decisions, these little things, and even a big thing like dealing with getting shot in the arm can, can even lead more to, to other consequences that happen. We're still looking at these different things that we were talking about with war, with divisions, with violence, with chance. Uh, but now we're looking at another thing that's really going to add into this, <clears throat> and that's pain and perseverance. And how can we deal through the pain? How can we deal through this uh, situation? So what we're, we're seeing here is that the, when the sniper, he's got to care for his wounds and he's got to will himself basically to get over this pain. Um, so he's got to be able to think rationally about escaping this situation. Uh, the two corpses that he sees um, kind of are a reminder of the fate that might fall if he doesn't um, think and he's not really witty and can't think of how to get through this situation or if he's too slow. Um, and he doesn't feel remorse uh, at the people he's killed because he can't really like focus on that right now. He's got to concentrate on getting through the situation, protecting himself, and he's in a lot of pain. So uh, things take precedent. Like I'm only, I'm going to worry about this, 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 and this, and I can't really worry about the two people I just killed. And so that's again where we see the war really blurs the lines. And so those themes are also pop up that war and the violence and the pain and the perseverance, how do we get through it? And then, then the humanity and remorse. I mean, those things come into play. So these are main themes that you really need to pay attention to um, as you read. As we're reading, we really see that the sniper proves that he's very thoughtful, very creative, very uh, um, got a lot of ingenuity in how to do things. Um, he's got to master the physical pain that he's dealing with, and he has to really outsmart his enemy. Um, why the enemy stands up um, is a question really to kind of consider. Um, does he really think he's killed the sniper? Uh, but by standing in the way that he did, it's kind of risky as well. But in some ways, it's you know kind of not more risky than it is the way the the Republican soldier lit a cigarette earlier. So I mean, that's that's kind of a crazy situation um, just to stand up in the middle of that. You know, and we see that the sniper, he's dealing with pain. He does not stop him from managing um, managing how to deal with his enemy. And he has to remove his enemy. And, and you're, you're in this like, this fervor, this heat of war and, and the competition between the two snipers. It makes the, the Republican sniper feel this joy for killing him because it's like, it's like a competition. It's not... That's that's the thing that blurs between war and sanity is that 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 he finds rejoicement in killing his opponent. Uh, it's like winning a game. He survived. He's outwitted his enemy. You know. Then there's a description of how the enemy sniper's body falls and and it accentuates that kind of lifelessness uh, and how war really just does involve taking someone's life. And we look at, you know, dealing with humanity again and pain and perseverance, and that's a tough situation. Okay, now we realize that um, after he kills the sniper, his adrenaline kind of ceases. And I don't know about you guys, but sometimes when you're in a heightened fight or flight situation or in a game or something where your adrenaline kind of leaves you, you get more rational feelings. And he, he starts to realize his own human feelings. Um, his hunger, he's really hungry, his disgust, his remorse, and his anger, and he cannot so easily live with just the goal of killing people or the justification of it um, or even, you know, why war's going on. And, and, and now that his life's not threatened, he, he, he has that remorse set in. Um, war is that us versus them, just like sometimes competition. And a lot of times we say, you know, in football, we'd be like, we're going to war, we're going to battle. And, and, and it's kind of that mindset, but it doesn't have that life or death consequences. Um, but he's got to have that effort to survive, that effort to win. Um, and But when it's not that kind of fight or flight, survive or die situation, he's aware of the complexities of life and honestly, the preciousness of life. 
and that kind of sets in on him. And he, he really, that theme with humanity really focuses back in. And we see that the sniper, he gets frustrated with war. Um, um, but firing the gun, you know, is what it, he has to do. Um, he's stuck in war right now because um, guns are going to fire at him. So he's got to fire back and he's got he's got to deal with it. He can't abandon war because that's what's going on. Um, he's going to go report to his commander. But before he does that, before he re reports to his commander, he's got that kind of basic human emotion, that need, that curiosity. He needs to know um, who it was. He, he starts to imagine life before the Civil War. Um, what before the people and lives and families were split, um, and that 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 when people really were together, and he wonders, you know, at the common humanity that him and the soldier that he was just facing and killed, what did they share? What kind of humanity? You know, the sniper he's not done fighting. Um, he runs, um, you know, at the moment of danger, and he hides. Uh, among the, the enemy's sniper body for protection. And when he manages to kind of kind of satisfy that curiosity about the identity, he suddenly has this, this revelation that is pure chance, that is pure um, craziness. <laughs> Honestly, the sniper has killed his brother. That's his brother that he was facing. And not figuratively, but yes, figuratively, but also literally. Like it was his countryman that he killed, but it was his literal brother that he killed. And that there's a cost of war. And there's a, a, a rupture between the families, between civil war and like going on, you know, in, in the American Civil War, even going on today with party politics. Some people are Republicans, some people are Democrats, and it makes people so divided and it's clear that they're forced beyond the question of, of who wins the war because, honestly, does the sniper now feel like he's won? He's killed his brother. How does he won this situation? He's not won this situation. That war is real. Um, how do you preserve past this breakage of family now? And that's what kind of the author is looking at here is like, when you get into a civil war like this, you're breaking not not just a break, but a profound division of family and a nation that's created by a war and division. This is a tough story to, to, to swallow because it really puts a lot of things into clarity and, and um, makes us question how we look at things.